If you're like me, you may have spent a lot of your life beating yourself up for the things you may have done in your past, for past failures, misdeeds, missteps, things you regret. And for a long time, I carried al along with me a list of these failures and these regrets and things I wished I would have done differently. This list was longer than a CVS receipt. And my mind was basically a courtroom drama where I was the prosecutor filing all these charges. And I was also the defendant, right? The past me was the defendant. And I was trying to plead not guilty to those charges. And my self-talk was basically this really exaggerated courtroom drama where I would hold myself accountable for all these, all these things that I've done in my past. And the principal ways I would punish myself was guilt and shame. And also different kinds of punishment, which involved me withdrawing approval from myself, me withdrawing affection and love from myself. And so this kind of guilt, this kind of shame, this kind of punishment, you can imagine is a learned behavior. Because most of us have been raised by wounded people. My parents were quite wounded themselves. They had a lot of trauma of their own. And they didn't really know how to love themselves and really be nice to themselves. And that's what was projected onto me when I was growing up. And if you're like me or like most people, you probably beat yourself a lot, right? Most ambitious people, most high performers, most people who are growth oriented, who are trying to make an impact in the world, who are trying to make a difference in their own lives and the lives of the people around them for their families, they suffer from this flavor of perfectionism. And this occurs both in the present in the future and in the past. When it comes to the future, it's this desire to make something perfect before anyone has a chance to judge you or judge it negatively. But with the past, it comes in the form of having a list of grievances, having a list of charges, prosecuting yourself, persecuting yourself about all these things that happened. Now, I want to share a few things that might help you liberate yourself from this kind of behavior. And this doesn't involve, you know, the four steps to this or the five steps to that, because all those things, you know, all those techniques, all those tricks are well-meaning, but they don't really work because they just give us more stuff to keep track of. And, you know, any process, any tool, that adds to our mind, it makes our mind more full, is ultimately not very helpful because we're not trying to fill our mind with more information and more stuff to keep track of. It's actually the other way around. We wanna reduce the stuff in our heads, in our minds, so we can be more than our mind. And for most people, that's just, you know, the thoughts and the feelings and the beliefs and the perceptions that they've had most of their life. And most people, they carry around their personal history and this, you know, prosecution list, um, and this, you know, CVS receipt of all the charges is included in that, right? Those are our judgments about ourselves, what who we were, how we were, what we did. So the first thing, the first insight that I want to share is that achieving our potential, really performing at our peak, which is what a lot of us want to do. We want to make impact, right? We want to live really extraordinary lives. We want to make a contribution. We want to feel happy. We want to feel peaceful. We want to be in our flow. We want to create. We want to serve. All of this is impossible when we're persecuted by the tyranny of our own thoughts. It's impossible to be at our peak, 
to feel at our peak, when we're drowning in a tidal wave of our own thoughts and emotions. So the key thing to know, to feel, to really understand here is the state of our mind is the state of our life. If we feel this constant sense of being persecuted by this invisible mini me inside our heads, then we'll always be in defense mode because we're being attacked, not by an external threat, by, but by our own egoic sense of how things should have been, how we should have been, right? It's the, the shooting. I should have done this. I should have done that. I should have known this. I should have known that. But the truth is, if you could have, you would have. Because everything happened the way it needed to happen. Because it didn't happen any other way. If you had the innate capacity to do something different, to show up in a different way, whether it's with your business, your work, with money, in a certain relationship you had that you are really sad about, that maybe your actions cost you that person. Maybe you failed an exam, maybe there were these goals you had with your body. If you could have, you would have. Because in every moment, what arises out of us, the actions we take, how we show up, what we do, is a result of our level of consciousness in the moment and our conditioning. So how much awareness we have about the present moment, about how we feel, what we know, what choices appear, right? It's all dependent on our level of consciousness, how much we see, what we see, how we see it, where we're seeing it from. And also our conditioning, because for most people, 95 to 99% of everything that they think, feel, and do has been imprinted, conditioned into them, into their subconscious. And most people run on autopilot 95 to 99% of the time. In fact, by the age of seven, our subconscious is about 90 to 95% developed. So our core sense of ourselves, our relationship with ourselves, how we treat ourselves, how we work with ourselves is pretty established by the age of seven and eight, right? And all of it is modeled by our parents. So if our parents used, you know, ways of um, enforcing certain behavior and inducing performance like guilt and shame and pressure and punishment, then that's how we treat ourselves. And so for most of my life, that's how I treated myself. I would guilt myself, right? I would shame myself. I call myself all sorts of names. I carry that guilt with me. And Eastern upbringing does that really well. <laughs> um, I would punish myself. I would withdraw my own approval from myself, my own affection. I would deny myself things. I punish myself. Now, all of these are well-intentioned ways. We're really trying to get ourselves to do the thing that we think we need to do. But the truth is, all of these ways create more pressure, more resistance, more contraction. And when we're in a contracted state, right? Stress is a great symptom of being in a contracted state. We don't really function well. The mind isn't designed to function and to feel good under stress, under pressure. It just doesn't work like that. It, we work better when we're happy, when we're in joy, when we're playing. In fact, when we're in a state of play, we learn about 40 times more than in a state of stress. And so if you think about how society is organized, how school works, how 
you know, education in general works, how parenting works. Everything is about guilt, shame, punishment, pressure. So all of us as adults who have trouble, you know, with negative self-talk, self-criticism, self-betrayal, really beating ourselves up, this has been institutionalized in us. We've been trained to act this way. And so if we don't want that, if we don't want our head to be this courtroom where it's me versus me versus me, where I'm the judge and I'm the jury and I'm the executioner, and most of my life is spent embroiled in this drama, really limiting how much of my potential I achieve and I express, really limiting the amount of peace and happiness and joy and bliss that I feel. That's not a recipe for an extraordinary life. So understand this as best as you can right now and try to come back to this. If you could have, you would have. If you had known better in the past, you would have done better. And the kindest, the most amazing thing you can do for yourself and the biggest gift you can give to yourself and the, the biggest performance enhancement, performance optimization you can have. And, you know, as a mental performance coach, I've worked with hundreds of top performers in all sorts of different industries. And I've never found this to not be true. Can you take that pressure off? Can you allow whatever happened to have happened? Because it doesn't really matter what's happened in the past when you're here for what's possible in the present. And when you're stuck in the past, persecuting yourself, then you're not really available in the present. You're not really here. Your mind is elsewhere. It's in the past, right? Or an extrapolated future based on your past. Either way, you're just stuck in a different point in psychological time. You're not here, you're somewhere else. And when you're not here, how well can you create? How, how good can you feel? How well can you perform now? Probably not very. And if you have heard of, um, there's a guy with an unpronounceable last name. His first name is Mihaly. He came up with this um, definition of flow, right? Flow state. And I'll do an episode on this later on, but he basically points to people who are experts, surfers, and skiers. And he looked at these performers in various sports and um, you know different uh, different areas of of expertise, like musicians as well. And he found that when they're in the zone, they're actually so present that there's no activity in the mind there's no thoughts they're not in the past they're not in the future they're not anticipating like oh what am i going to do am i going to make a left am my knees going to go right as they're skiing down the mountain they become one with the mountain it's purely instinctual and that's what being in the zone is and you know when we're in the zone we perform about 500 percent better than we would when we're out of the zone. And being out of the zone is being in this sense of being in the past or the future. So the biggest gift you can give to your performance, to your well-being, to how you feel, is to allow bygones to be bygones. Because any part of our life that is excluded keeps us from being free. So what do I mean by that? When we're berating ourselves for something we did in the past, we are excluding ourselves. We're excluding that part of us. Because that behavior came from a certain part of our consciousness. That behavior came from a certain thought or belief, a certain part of ourself. So when we prosecute ourselves in this way, Right? We're creating more separation. We're creating more separation from ourselves. 
And what happens when that happens is that we break up into certain fragments and then we push away certain fragments. That's what this sense of shame does. When I'm ashamed of myself, maybe I have a, a certain habit that I'm ashamed of or a, a sexual kink or some, something I did in the past. Maybe I was a heroin addict and I'm ashamed of it. When I exclude myself with that shame, I just become more fragmented. I don't feel whole. I don't feel unified. And what we're all searching for is that sense of unification, is that integration of all parts of us. So any part of our life that is excluded, it keeps us from being free. And if you follow this show, then you understand that, at least for me, my highest value is freedom. That's what I wanted since I was a kid. That's what's motivated me. That's what continues to motivate me. I want to be free. But not just free, you know, to go places and, you know, do whatever I want. I mean, that's great. But that's not real freedom. Real freedom is in the mind. Real freedom is me being able to feel the way I want to feel. Me not being persecuted by the tyranny of my own thoughts. <laughs> so if there are parts of your life that you feel really ashamed of, you feel really guilty when you think about it, that brings up this feeling of separation from yourself. Can you just allow a space where whatever happened, happened, and for that to be okay? Can you grant yourself that grace that if you could have known better, you would have done better? And because that's what happened, that was the only thing that could have happened. And can you put down the stick that you use to beat yourself up, hoping that you'll perform better, you'll do better, you'll be more disciplined, you'll do the things that you're perpetually procrastinating on? And can you trust in yourself? Can you build that trust with yourself? And I promise I'll do an episode on this later on, how to really build that trust with ourselves, right? But in this moment, can you just choose to trust yourself? Can you trust that you'll do the right thing? You'll do your best. Because every single human being is doing the best that they can. Whether we see it like that or, or we don't. Right? Everyone's trying to do their best. Even the people who, you know, we, as a society, we condemn because they're bad or they're evil, right? We label people. But to that person, they're not evil. They're just doing the best that they can, that they know how, right? And they might cause damage, they might hurt people, but you know, in their mind, there is a justification. They're, they're not seeing it as you see it. And when we allow that insight to soften us, to allow some compassion to arise for the other, then that's the same channel through which that compassion can be felt for ourselves. So can you be compassionate for yourself? for all the things that you've done or not done? And can you allow this moment to be a second chance? Just take a fresh start right now. Drop the charges. And I actually did this exercise with a client the other day. We did a mock courtroom where she was the prosecutor and then I had her switch chairs and she was the defendant. And she read out the charges, the defendant, you know, 
pleaded not guilty and then she was the prosecutor again and she dropped the charges and she allowed the defendant that is her past self to walk free so can you allow your past self to be free what that means is no longer putting your attention on persecuting yourself trusting that you'll do the right thing in this moment in the present i hope this was useful and therapeutic for you and that it brought up some new insights and i'd love to hear i'd love to hear from you if this helped you in any way it really means a lot to me when people reach out so drop a comment leave a review send me an email and know that you are not your past you are not your history you're not your misdeeds that you're not your failures you are limitless and i'm going to leave you with some sound from my new toy a little tiny singing bell <laughs>